Pikachu. Bulbasaur. Venusaur. Eevee. Execute. Vaporeon. Mm, you already said Eevee, didn't you? Yes. Ah. <laughs> Welcome to New Zealand. How are you guys doing today? Good, good. Awesome. Very well, thank you. Fantastic. So I'll be honest, I had no idea that you guys were a thing until the other <laughs> day. So I'm kind of glad we got you guys as together. A, th a thing as in like a like a little object, a little, um, little pack of toothpicks? A little, uh, little uh, thing. Uh, we can, it, whatever you like, whatever you like. Whatever thing, whatever Yeah. What have you guys been up to while we've been here? It's the last day of Armageddon. How, how do you guys feel? Good. Uh, tired. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's ready to see my cats again. But uh, <laughs> we uh, we went to Rangitoto Island, which was lovely, and uh, Hobbiton on Friday. So yeah, yeah. Really fun. And then, Fantastic. And then the con. Yeah. And then the con. Yeah, we've gotten to lot, meet a lot of people and do a lot of signings. Yeah. We did a panel. Yes, we did. Uh, yeah, on the voice cool. acting. And yeah, it's been uh, pretty Excellent. great. So I understand, Erica. Uh, you didn't actually start off as a voice actor or a graphic designer. Uh, g kind of, for the, for the most part. Well, I had actually, uh, I, I had done a few voiceover stuff online as like a hobby at first, because um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a stage actor. I, had, I was a little shy, too shy for that, so I wasn't sure how that field would work out for me. So um, I actually drew a lot when I was younger, and that was more of my passion at the time. Mm. So I went to school um, sort of for graphic design, but mainly for animation, because I just love cartoons and video games. So yeah. And then it kind of, uh, kind of, Worked out to where I just ended up doing voiceover in a in a weird roundabout way. Okay, awesome. So, um, with regards to the whole sub dub argument, so you obviously know yes. that's a big big thing in the the anime industry. Yes. What's your stance on the whole thing? Because obviously you, I I, wrote, I remember um, seeing an interview. With, I think it was Anime Next recently, mm -hmm. where you were talking about how I think it was a sort of online role where you felt a little bit pressured to to sort of. Uh, bringing in, in the emotion for your character. Mm. Um, so, do you do you feel that a lot with a lot of you know going from Japanese dub to English dub? Do you feel a lot of that pressure? Is there a lot of things that you have to think about before you go in and do that? Yeah, there can be because usually, um, at least on the Los Angeles side of things, I think Texas they work a little faster on their shows lately. But uh, the Japanese is usually sometimes it's out for years before we finally get to do it in English, and uh, people just have that. Uh, impression of the characters and how they sound and how it makes them feel so there is sort of a, a, a pressure to uh, do at least if not for yourself you know for the uh, the fans to make sure that they understand uh, the emotion that you're putting into it and if it's you know good enough or at least equal to the original to make it a, a performance good enough for the fans or for yourself okay I know for, for me, it's really the, the character is, is most important and, and um, certainly you can uh, gather a lot of uh, a strong impression from the Japanese original performance, uh, but in the end we are creating a new performance for English speaking audiences and we have to uh, realize that character uh, in, in English. So it can't be, the way I like to put it is, it can't be a carbon copy just because of the differences uh, in the, you know, the difference, differences of languages and the, and the uh, thematic uh, and, and just, again, tonal, tonally speaking. Uh, so we just have to, again, take the essence of what came before and make sure that is uh, genuine and we're staying true to the character but still, again, making it uh, a performance that, that works well for, for English speakers. Okay, so is it, speaking of mannerisms and things like that, so obviously there's different shapes and sizes and mannerisms of characters. Mm -hmm. Do you find any particular, say if somebody's got a lisp or somebody's got something that makes them characteristic, um, is this something that you find the most difficult or have you had something that's been really challenging for both of you? Um, Any time, I mean, any character who maybe has a very uh, harsh or coarse uh, voice with a lot of a lot of gravel or uh, any she can attest to this role with a lot of screaming mm -hmm. uh, you know I don't care how trained a singer you know or, or how con well conditioned your voice is when you're being lit on fire for the seventeenth time that day uh, and slowly dying uh, you know it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt. A bit. Absolutely. Uh, so for me, uh, yeah, that kind of uh, vocal stress, that's the most difficult to sustain. 
Okay. For yeah. character. I would, I would say that there's a lot of that, but also for me, uh, being able to play the opposite gender, I play a lot of young boys in cartoons. Uh, I haven't lived the life of a boy, so I don't know exactly, you know, the mannerisms or the, the way of speech, so I kind of try to make my best assessment of it. And I, uh, I'll have, you know, luckily directors, a lot of male directors kind of are able to, to put me in that zone a little bit more because they obviously know more of how it is to be a young boy <laughs> at that age. So I, I, I kind of rely on that a lot to, to help me out. Um, so if it's not the manners, and maybe I'll put a little bit more grit into my voice and, and stuff like that. So it, playing the opposite gender can be can be difficult. Yeah. So that was actually one of my questions as well. How sort of you approach the both sexes? Is there a particular way that you go about um, going? You know, trying to make them into a character that's believable. Yeah. For 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 young boys, a lot of it is uh, mainly. I know not every boy does this, obviously, but uh, to kind of help the illusion, I guess. I, I drop a lot of the G's on ING words, so instead of like playing, it'd be, I'm playing, I'm going out to play, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, like little things like that, or like I said, putting a little bit more grit into the voice generally tends to help. And, and just dirty, not dirty up the diction. Yeah, and yeah. And, uh, not being as breathy and just kind of a little bit more rough and tumbly all around. Well, okay. So, obviously, you must have amazing moments while in the booth and, and developing your characters over time. Is there anything that you'd like to forget about? Not that this recording will help, but is there anything that you'd like to forget about some, that something that's happened in the booth or something that you've been, you know, that you've been asked to do, <laughs> or a few things? I don't know. Even even the experiences I've had where uh, maybe it's 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 felt a bit rough. I felt like uh, maybe I, I didn't get myself satisfied with the the, the performance or the director maybe wasn't completely satisfied. Um, I don't know, I feel like all of those things help to inform you and your experiences as an actor and, and uh, I don't know, it just, it just makes you a better actor. So I don't know if there's anything I, I would forget. There have certainly been uh, times where I've been goofy in the booth and, and, and done outtakes and uh, stuff has gone wrong or uh, what have you. Um, but I don't, know, I, I don't know that I would forget any of it. Sometimes I feel like I could forget that, you know, it, it's not necessarily about me because sometimes I get a little bit too hard on myself um, in the booth and I'll, I'll say stuff like, oh man, that wasn't the right one or like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do that like that. I, let me do another one. I just kind of should leave it up to the director to decide if it's good or not and not be too hard on myself. So I'd like to forget, uh, <laughs> forget myself sometimes, I think, in the booth just to kind of let go and have fun with it because I feel like those are generally the, the best performances where you kind of let yourself be vulnerable because like for Sword Art Online 2 where I play Yuki and there's a lot of emotional scenes in that I kind of I honestly did forget and I just kind of put myself into the character and just you know I cried I actually cried during that performance and it, I think it came out I remember seeing through those scenes and they were quite emotional yeah, Japanese yeah. and English are yeah. very well done yeah. so yeah. talking about influences then for you guys what what has your journey been in terms of obviously you've come from a sort of a graphic design background mm -hmm. and, and yourself did you start off with voice acting is there a particular journey well, I, uh, I, I did acting on stage in school I do um, it was kind of uh, I went to a Waldorf school and it was just kind of the curriculum that at the end of each year your combined class would put on a play whether you, <laughs> you know, were into drama or not uh, so obviously the ones who were a little more outgoing and uh, wanted to be in a play would get more prominent roles but uh, certainly for me in the beginning it was like you know, a little side character here, a townsperson there um, but through that I discovered that I really because uh, I was a very deathly shy child um, you know, the, the best story I could tell that encompasses that is that I think for one of our parent-teacher conferences, I literally hid under the desk while, while we were meeting because I was just like, no, don't want to be seeing, don't want anyone to be seeing me, uh, it's too scary. So, but for whatever reason, uh, playing a character on stage was very liberating. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it I think it was sort of almost a, a shield for my social anxiety. And that sort of continued onward and my, my mom saw this and, and felt there was something to it. And so I, I got into acting that way and then voice acting 
kind of came as an extension of that sometime later uh, as a result of watching anime and recognizing voices in, in, the, uh, in my anime that I was watching. Uh, and then just kind of trying it out for myself, recording myself, and, and doing different voices and uh, reciting monologues that I had memorized from my, the video games I was playing uh, and anime. And I just thought, this is really cool. I, I can be so many different characters and, and things. And, uh, and as long as I can create that character with my voice, uh, you know, the rest doesn't really matter. So I really enjoyed the, the, the imagination and the, the, the freedom that went along with that. So I thought, this is, this is got to be it. <laughs> this yeah. is what I want to be doing more than anything else. It's kind of a bit of an escape, isn't it? It's quite freeing as well. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Because I mean, so much of it, I mean, there's you know, no way that half of the characters, probably way more actually than that, uh, I would ever have played on stage or you know, certainly not on camera. Because uh, I don't look like the character, but uh, as a voice actor, I can play those characters um, and you know, tell these fantastic uh, and fantastical stories. Uh, it's yeah, it's really, really, really great. So, is there a particular character or characters that you guys are attached to in particular? Something that you really developed well, and you kind of it was kind of a, became a part of you. It's really tough. Um, I don't know. I feel like. I, if I don't lose a little bit of myself in the character, I bring a little bit back with me. And I've gotten a chance to play so many wonderful characters um, like Yuki and Tsubaki in Your Line April and going in Hunter Hunter, Ryuko and Kill a Kill and Sailor Moon, like being in Sailor Moon is... I, I didn't really watch it much as a kid, but like I, I know to appreciate it because it's been around for so long and it means so much to people, so... Um, I don't know, I, but... I. I think Love Live. I, I'm gonna go with Love Live for this one, just because I that was a series I really loved uh, before I even got to audition for it, and I found my a little bit more of Nico, I think, in, in myself than than most other characters I've played so far. Oh, excellent! Yeah. And yourself? Do you have any? Uh, I mean, I'm kind of similar. Uh, similarly, there've been a number of characters which I don't know, I've, I've really just enjoyed playing because. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not just one thing, like Jafar from Magi the Labyrinth of Magic, uh, or even, you know, like a villain like Zoisite from Sailor Moon. Uh, yes, he's uh, <laughs> kind of vindictive and, and uh, haughty at times, but then there's that vulnerability at, uh, at the core of him and, and wanting the appeasement of Queen Beryl and, and his lover, Kunzite. Uh, so, you know, characters like that, which have multiple layers to them. Um, I, for me, Again, I played Robin in a Batman movie, and it's pretty hard to beat that as far as just iconic value um, and getting to be involved with that property. Uh, and, and I was just I had such a good time playing that character in the movie. And again, getting to do, again, dramatic, heartfelt scenes, but also sort of comedic uh, moments with Batman uh, and, and action stuff. You know, it got, I got to do a bit of everything. Uh, I'm just really, really proud and, and thankful I got to be involved in something like that. Fantastic. Um, so, obviously there's tons of aspiring voice actors. I'm sure you've met many people at the cons that you've been to. Um, and there's a very sensationalized, well, I think a sensationalized view of, uh, of voice acting. And I've spoken to a few like Stephanie Shea and some really, really like amazing talent out there. Um, what do you have any comments on the industry itself? Or is it tough? Uh, how does it how does it work? What sort of things stand out to you? Is there sort of a divide? I spoke to Stephanie in, in particular about ethnic mon minorities and even even females, uh, are voice actors and things like that. Do you feel like um, it's it's quite divided in some way, or uh, is there some comments that you can make on just how the industry is at the moment? For me, it's just, it's kind of hard to say exactly how it is because it's always changing. It's, I mean, I've been doing this for about four years now and it's changed already so much since when I first started. Um, sometimes it, it tends to be a little bit more about appearances than you would think. Because like when I first started, it was, it was like, you know, uh, nobody cares what you look like. You're just playing your characters. You're behind a microphone. But as more and more companies start to uh, promote like visually promote at conventions or 
or just in media in general, it, it becomes a little bit more about the appearance, and maybe sometimes that might affect the casting. Not all the time, uh, for sure, but but it, it tends to become a little bit apparent sometimes, and and that that gets a little discouraging. But you know, if it's, it's something you love, obviously you're going to keep trying, and no matter what, and you just kind of hope that that uh, that special thing that you bring to characters kind of outshines any other obstacle that's in the way. Sure. So. Oh, cool. So, sorry, and, and you start. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think it's, I think that I think the business and, and the nature of, of the, the voice acting and, and the people in it has changed and evolved. It used to be a very, very select number of people who did everything, We're going back to like Mel Blanc of Looney Tunes and Daz Butler of Anna Barbera, and, you know, unless you were those, you know, Paul Fries, June Foray, unless you were those people, uh, good luck. Uh, and now certainly, um, that uh, group has expanded, but now also the, the market and a number of shows has expanded. I think it's always been difficult, and you know, for me, again, I am neither a woman or a minority, uh, but it has certainly not been uh, an easy uh, journey. And um, there are still weeks where you, know, you don't know when, when your next job is coming up. That's just, you know, that's the common plight of every actor. Um, but again, to reiterate what Eric has said, if this is something you enjoy, you know, and love, I would say, if you love this and you must do this more than anything else, that was certainly the case with me, then you got to do it, and then, you know, uh, screw the <laughs> screw the odds, uh, just just go for it. Uh, how do you, how do, how will you know if you don't, you know, give give it a shot? Uh, it's not for everyone. Uh, again, it can be very. Um, again, heartbreaking and, and it can, uh, it's tough, it's very difficult, but uh, so, is, so are a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So if that's the thing for you, then pursue it with all your heart. Uh, that's, cool. that's my advice. Well, thank you guys, that's <laughs> awesome. Okay, so if there's something that you could change about the industry, what would you guys change, if there's anything? Um, I wish that more sessions <laughs> I wish I wish that budgets were not an issue, yeah. and and pre and ev every project that necessitated it or, or or could benefit from it would just do uh, group sessions with with all of the actors in the room. Mm -hmm. To me, that's my favorite thing. I have the most fun doing that. Uh, it's still done, you know, uh, for a certain uh, animated series or even you know commercials that I've done. You'll work with the other actor, but more and more projects. Again, as budgets have shrunk and Scheduling conflicts are an issue. Um, you know, they'll, they'll bring actors sometimes one at a time and then piece the performances together. And not to say you can't get a good product that way, but for me as an actor, it's way more fun <laughs> yeah. when there are uh, other actors that you can work off of. I think it's a lot easier to interact with them as well. I think, that I think so. I think so because then you're not. I don't know. And for everyone involved, you're not second guessing. You know, does this. Does the way they delivered this line tuck into the you know, next one, and does that make sense? And do they, you know, you hear it all together in context, uh, so you know whether whether it works or not. And um, I did a video game called uh, Masquerada, uh, Songs and Shadows, I think it's called. That's out now, and um, I got to record that uh, my, my character. I got to record his scene with uh, an actor named Robbie Damon, and just. Hearing, because that was my first day on the job, and I didn't know the the tone, the style of the game yet. But hearing what Robbie did, you know, and his English accented character, it, it just instantly informed my choices of the character. I don't know. I just think it, it makes sense. Uh, and you know, and as actors, we like to bounce off of each other. For sure. Uh, yeah. I, again. I and I'm guessing you guys bounce off of each other as well in <laughs> in terms of you know the voice acting. Do you do you interact a lot in voices? Do you Kind of feel funny. Not as much yeah. as you would think, yeah. Yeah. considering, yeah. Uh, well, we do a lot of uh, anime work generally, and, and uh -huh. JRPGs, Japanese. And that's usually. And you work yeah. together yeah. a few times as well, is that right? Or we've we've yeah. been in several projects, but again, yeah. it's usually, you know, we're not in the studio yeah. together recording yeah. at once. It's one one at a time. And so, you know, yeah, we'll be in projects together and we'll go, oh, so how's that? <laughs> and you did this, and now yeah. I see. Uh, awesome. We can uh, commiserate like that. <laughs> but uh, I think. Yeah, we, we haven't actually recorded together at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for some times, but not not but often. But not on most okay. of the, the work that we do. Right. Okay. Yeah. So where is it next for you guys? What are you working on next, and what what 
we expect? Uh, well, I'm probably going to be working on Hunter Hunter until I die. Uh, <laughs> not that long, but at least for the next two years or so, which is, is very exciting for me. It's a great series, so yeah. I'm super excited. I've been recommended that. I haven't watched it, honestly, yet, but I have been. I'm, it's on the list. Yeah, I'm just now getting into it myself, right. actually, because I'm, I'm trying to... Lately, I've been trying to go through the journey with the characters, so I won't watch the show um, mm. ahead of time like I used to, because I'm a fan of you know all this stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, I'd get really excited and I'd watch it beforehand to see where things go, but I realize that doesn't always help my performances because sometimes I'll get things wrong or the director has a different view on things. So I try to go through the journey with the character now. But uh, so there's there's Hunter Hunter and of course more Sailor Moons coming and and a bunch of other stuff I can't talk about just yet. Yep. That's really yeah, exciting. I um, <laughs> don't want to tease too much though, but I'm really excited about you know. We're excited too. The future, yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, before you guys go, um, I've got some quick fire questions for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lucien, yes. um, if chili from Pokemon <laughs> All right. was to spice up a food dish, yes. what would that be? Spice it up? <laughs> um, oh, man. You know, we, we, we've had some, uh, some tasty dishes here. I'm, I'm thinking like that, uh, that spinach. Uh, gnocchi. Uh, maybe good. he would he would give some a fiery sort of flourish to that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's Excellent. Pretty good. <laughs> okay, and then three um, voices of your characters. How would you describe yourself in three words? Uh, what was the? I'm sorry. What was the so so <laughs> using using, using three voices of the characters that you portrayed, uh, oh. <laughs> just randomly of your choice choosing describe yourself so one, in three words. One word for, per voice. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> that's really tough. Usually Dude, I, have to, I have to like, no, but I have to think of words for I myself know. too, though. Which is <laughs> I'm just helping you out with the voices. Um, well, maybe while she thinks of something, okay. I can ask <laughs> you another one. Could you, um, so what are you listening to at the moment? What this am I listening to? Yeah. It's funny you ask that because uh, for the past several months now, I've been making it a point uh, because uh, I have a card which has slightly older technology. I have a six CD changer. So I decided, mm -hmm. you know what? I, I live in LA and I commute a lot to studios back and forth. Sometimes I'm in traffic a long time uh, in, in yeah, rush hour traffic. And I'm going to go to the local library and I'm going to check out CDs of uh, artists, you know, musical artists that maybe I've heard of, but I couldn't necessarily name a song that they okay. do. Uh, so, you know, I, I checked out, you know, David Bowie. Of course, yeah. uh, uh, um, Apparently just David Bowie. Apparently that's the only one. <laughs> I'm just like, all of the names now I'm trying to remember. Uh, no, I've tried to do a collection of rock albums, uh, classical, um, jazz. Uh, yeah, so, you know, John Coltrane, yeah. Miles Davis. Uh, kind of Blue is an amazing what, album. What is it? Kind of Blue. Kind of Blue. I don't know if I know that. I think I got... got uh, I feel like everybody um, who, ha who loves jazz or Miles Davis needs to have I that think I got it. Uh, Miles Davis uh, in a silent way, which I quite mm -hmm. liked. And then, uh, I don't know if I can say the name of... It, it's Bleepin' Brew. It, oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. Yes. That's a good album, too. Yes. That's a really good, good. album. Uh, and then, yeah, and classical music. You know, Tchaikovsky, I, I really enjoy. And... and uh, Mussorgsky, I think you mm -hmm. say you say his name. Uh, Mahler, yeah, of course. Mozart. It's quite a mixture. And, uh, yeah, mixture. and then uh, recently, because uh, I had kind of gone through most of the <laughs> the the selection there, I took out uh, an audiobook, and they, they have quite a few audiobooks there, which I'll eventually get through. And so, listening to awesome. an audiobook in the car, uh, I think what was it? I listened to Me Earl and the, and the Dying Girl, which was right. quite. Funny, but you know, it's kind of about a sad subject about a girl who's got leukemia, right. and so it's touching, but it's also humorous. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed it. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so that's my way of sort of keeping myself just get, keep, keeping the mind kind of uh, keeping those gears turning uh, and just culturing myself. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my warm up to, to sessions. Also, just listening to stuff. Well, good. Jake, and how <laughs> Jeez, uh, so I'm just gonna do like I guess how the words that came to my mind of how I feel like right okay. at this moment. Yeah. So, uh, happy, hungry, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm always hungry too. <laughs> and inspired. Excellent. So, okay. I don't know what voices those were, but there is something. <laughs> okay. <I'm> too tired. <laughs> and finally, to finish off, um, starting with Lucian and alternating, can you name ten Pokemon as fast as you can? Oh boy. We're alternating, you, so you. Oh, alternating? Yeah, okay. you have time to think. That's a little bit. Okay. Pikachu. Bulbasaur. Venusaur. Eevee. 
Execute. Vaporeon. Mm, you already said Eevee, didn't you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, Pantsier. Mew. Uh, Laporeon? Vaporeon? Did you already say? Yes, know. I did. <laughs> I did. I'm, I'm just like fucking. Um, I think we're at uh, state. What's the piggy? <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, coughing. Yep, that's, you know, I'm just gonna. That's I'm, it, gonna that's, that's I'm just gonna name all the Pokemon I played in Origins. <laughs> oh, okay. So coughing. Esper. Kabutops. Oh, wait, I, and I, I think we've got one and more. And then, then one more. Then Raichu. Fantastic. And, awesome. Yeah. I'm better at this. Game. Oddish. <laughs> We're done. I know. I know. I know. Hey, thank you guys. Thanks for thank um, talking much. with us. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming to New Zealand. Is this your first trip yeah, as well? It is. It, it is. is. Okay. Yeah. Well, we hope you come back soon. Yeah. Well, thank you very um, much. And if you're ever hungry, there's loads of amazing food places out there that awesome. you can try out. Um, no. well, thank we'll you for. Talk uh, to you later and get some. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I'm on Twitter and everywhere, so just treat me or something anytime. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.